Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. We are back on the dev server and we are going to be doing individual vehicle reviews now. So before we did the larger videos, which look uh, through all of the different stuff which has changed in the game, these videos are specifically a more direct look at individual vehicles that are coming in the next major update. So we'll be covering a lot of them, depending on how much time that we have, and also they'll be coming out pretty much every hour. Uh, over the next day. So if there's a specific vehicle you're looking forward to, first of all, they'll be out over the day. And if there isn't anything that I get to in this dev server, it's probably because of the fact that it's unfinished and I don't want to go through it uh, multiple times because it will probably get updated as the dev server goes along. Also, if there are any bugs, as always, they will hopefully be fixed by the time it comes to the live server and I will mention them as well just to kind of show you what's going on. So as always, if you enjoy the content, make sure to subscribe and also like the video. Let's get into it. The first vehicle we're having a look at is a new AA system that is coming to two ground tech trees. We have the NASAMS 3. This is coming to America. Uh, it's going to be after uh, the most recent addition to the AAs, the claws uh, that you can see right here. And then it's also coming to Sweden in the form of the Norwegian version of the NASAMS 3. Now, the NASAMS is a pretty modern machine. Uh, it has access to a little truck with quite a large radar on it, uh, but also it gets access to this, the TEL, which is the launcher system itself. You get access to two of these uh, that you can spawn in. Both of them uh, have access to six launches of different missiles. You can kind of mix and match if you want to with it, and also the truck itself just looks really cool. This only has a crew of one. Uh, I'm guessing they're going to change that, but who knows? Maybe it's just the driver, who right now is a ghost. And then also, you have all of the other parts of it, which are pretty well modeled. This uses a Scania diesel engine, with not a ton of horsepower, but enough to be able to move the thing around the place, and also, in general, just little bits and pieces that are around. Now, you also uh, have access to the truck, as I said. This one has the AN MPQ-64. The range of it isn't exactly fantastic, but the search zone in general is quite nice, and also it can keep up to 40 targets at the same time, which I think is quite good. Unfortunately, when it comes to America, specifically with their AAs, they don't have one of these massive, large multi-vehicle systems. It seems like instead more kind of small Jeeps and stuff like that are being worked on. And that I'm sure will change in the future when they decide to add stuff like the Patria system, not the Patria, sorry, the Patriots system and uh, others for America. So this is more kind of like a filling in the gaps before you get those huge machines which I'm guessing will come out next year or the year after. The TADS vehicle has access to the driver and also the commander and driver controls. It also has a little engine, but it's also only two and a half tons. So this thing can actually motor around the place. You can see that it can go 130 kilometers an hour, which is completely wild uh, for this vehicle. It also has a good reverse speed, which is nice too, and also a big electronic box, which holds the radar electronics as well. So. It will be interesting to see how this vehicle works uh, because you have access to three separate missiles, kind of similar to the other American AA uh, setup. So you have access to the AIM-9X Block 2. This is an IR missile. You can see it has IR, IOG, GNSS, DL. So it can be data linked. It will go to the, towards the target even if it loses lock, and then it will hopefully reacquire it with its IR. And you can see that it has a lock range of nine kilometers in all aspect, which is just wild. And of course, IRCCM as well. This is the best, if not one of the best IR missiles we will ever see in the game. And it is on this NASAMS. Also, uh, you'll have access to the AIM 120C7. This is the standard AMRAM that you also see from the ground, a slight upgrade over the ones that you see in the air. And it has good TNT equivalent, decent distance of a launch range of 25, and also, once again, active radar homing and data link guidance. This also has an OK trigger radius. This is very much more of a middling missile compared to some of the larger ones that we have in ground forces. But this vehicle, the NASAMS-3, one of the big upgrades it gets over the other NASAMS is the access to the AMRAM ER. This is the extended range AMRAM, and you can see the big difference between the C7 and also the ER. The ER's launch range is 40 kilometers, 
Uh, so it just has a much bigger booster compared to uh, what you'll see from the other AMRAM. And it also has a much smaller trigger radius for some reason of only six meters. So my guess is that'll change since they have exactly the same warhead. It would be very weird if the ER had half of the trigger radius as the AIM-120, but who knows? Uh, maybe it's because of the fuse sensitivity or maybe it's because of other factors. But that will be a bit of a problem for the uh, missile because it will mean it will have to go very, very, very close. It's very similar to like the SAMPT and that missile that that vehicle has. Very powerful missile, super maneuverable, very good at tracking, but it has to get really close to the target to actually do damage. So just be a bit careful while using this. As you can see from the modifications, you also don't get the AMRAM ER as a stock uh, missile, which kind of sucks. I don't like it with these AAs uh, where they're at BRs, which are based on their spaded nature, uh, but they don't come with the best missiles that they can. It just means that you're pretty much useless until you get that. It's something that they used to do with the Floracrad, where you had to grind through the Roland missiles before you got the VT ones. It's something that you also do with stuff like the Tunguska and also the Shigla, where you have to grind out better missiles and even better improvements in the form of stuff like the Tunguska. And it just makes the overall experience just not as fun uh, because you know that you are a lot worse than you should be in terms of capabilities. The other modifications, this vehicle obviously can't defend itself on the ground, so it has access to scouting and also artillery, which is a nice little addition. So you can sometimes get out of dodge. So it'll be interesting to see how this works uh, because this vehicle can actually load up on all AIM-9Xs, which means that you don't actually need the radar uh, truck to actually work. And uh, I wonder if they'll actually make it. So if the radar truck dies, you'll also lose your other trucks. Or will it be more like the Japanese vehicles uh, where if you lose the radar truck, you can still wander around uh, with the little trucks in tow. My guess is you'll still be able to use the truck, but who knows? Uh, it may change as it goes forward. Uh, so... Uh, this, as I said, is exactly the same uh, as the one in the Swedish tech tree. The only difference is the camos between them and also, obviously, the uh, nations that they are part of. I think it's very important uh, that Sweden got access to a new AA machine just because of the fact that the Elder came in and it's cool, it's interesting, it's also got, you know, an interesting way that the transmission works, but it's just not very good. <laughs> so it's cool to get a massive upgrade over it. Where in the American tech tree, it's also lovely to get an upgrade, but it's definitely not something which is going to have as big of an effect in terms of the overall meta. They already have stuff like, uh, you know, the previous uh, clause system. They also have stuff like the ADATs, which is a good multi uh, role vehicle destroying tanks and also destroying uh, stuff like aircraft. The major thing that's uh, nice with this is the addition of the new missile, the AMRAM ER, which uh, this gets. So you can see that you can actually mix and match all of the different missiles if you want to. So if you want like, let's say one block of AIM-9X, but then you want like five of the AMRAMs, you can actually do that. And I think that's actually a, a really big positive for this. And maybe even for different uh, battles, it might actually be worth uh, having access to uh, different missiles based on the terrain that you have to fight on and also the way that you go. So this is what the missile system looks like. It looks really cool and uh, generally looks incredibly modern, I think is probably the way to put it. And the missiles themselves, turns out they're very good. So if you get within a range of 20 kilometers of this and you aren't going to have uh, a area between it, like a gap or a mountain between you and it, this thing will just absolutely annihilate you. And with this little uh, this little jeep here, you can see it is very mobile around the place, meaning that if you want to do that play style where you just run it around and try and cap things, I suppose you could, but you're gonna run into MBTs and you're gonna get annihilated. So it's not really gonna work very well. It's just really cool how they've added these kind of things over time and they just look really awesome. They also, the actual launcher itself turns very well, uh, meaning that if it needs to readjust to shoot something else, it will do it incredibly quickly. And you can also fire different launches at different targets at the same time, meaning that you can engage multiple air threats at the same time too. For me personally, it's just cool to see this. It's a lovely addition. 
Will it massively change uh, the meta? Of course not, but it's an improvement over what was there before, and that's what was required for this tech tree. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank GMG Smiley, CD Beans, Chieftain Mike, EMN3 Galaxy, Tulio Pontecovo, Brendan Quinn, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Ozzy Panzer, Alan Hacker, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Sem Aslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. for supporting the channel.